Credits code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old oh, boys, can't you code it? <laughs> Program it right. Nothing ever happens in the Welcome back to my video series on using Stata for statistical programming. Today we're going to start looking at graphics and visualizations of data and we're going to start with one of the more basic visualizations which is a histogram. I'll show you what the default histogram looks like in Stata, how to name your graphs, how to adjust the width of your bins, how to adjust the number of bins, how to show percentages instead of uh, densities, and how to use a buy option to show side-by-side uh, -side frequency distributions. Some of the commands we'll look at today can be used in all of Stata graphics, and others are uh, only for histogram. I've written a small program here to demonstrate, um, go to walk through all the examples of histogram that I'd like to show you today. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subset my data set. I'm going to use two keep commands, one to restrict my data set to the year 2010. The last year the variable prestige 80 was uh, collected. And then I'm only going to save the two variables, prestige 80 and sex, respondent sex. So if I highlight these two lines of code, and I come up here and I click on the execute button, and if you watch over on the right hand side, you'll see the number of variables decline. And we can look in the window, we can see how many observations were deleted and uh, that the keep command executed properly for keeping those two variables. The first thing I'm going to do is look at some uh, descriptive statistics and use the summarize command for the variable that I'm interested in, my dependent variable prestige 80, which is respondent occupational prestige. Again, highlighting and executing, I can see that, um, that my number of observations, my mean, my standard deviation, and for the purposes of calculating or creating a frequency histogram, my minimum and maximum values. If I look at the distance or the range between the minimum and maximum, I'm in pretty good shape to begin thinking about how many bins or how wide the bins should be. But let's go ahead and see how Stata does uh, just calculating or creating the visualization using only the defaults. There are, there's at least two ways to produce graphics in Stata, and what I'm going to concentrate in the videos that I'm producing is using the two-way option. So we're going to use always start our graphics command with two-way followed by the name of the kind of graphic we're creating in this case histogram and since we're doing a univariate histogram we only need the name of a single variable there. So you can see that this this these three line this one line of code with three words on it um, will produce the default histogram for occupational prestige. Let's see what that looks like. So Stata has used a formula to figure out how wide the bins should be. The bins are the columns, and it's collapsing data, and therefore how many bins there should be. And there's a compromise. Uh, if you make your bin widths wider, then you have fewer bins. If you make your bin width narrower, then you have more bins. Stata attempts to you know, use the number of cases to come up with an estimate of about how wide the bins should be, and therefore that limits the number of bins. This is not a particularly good looking graphic, but on the other hand, with very little effort, it might provide enough information for you to get a sense of what your data look like. Let's, look, let's move on and look at another option here. Here's pretty much the same command. Um, I'm starting off with my two-way histogram in the name of the variable. Now I have a comma, so I know everything after a comma in the state of language are options. And I'm going to use the name option. I'm going to say name and then parentheses. I give the name of the graphic I want to create. Now let's just take a look at this graphic for a minute. If you look the one we just created, if you look in the upper left hand corner you'll see it it says graph. That's the default name for Stata graphs. If I don't give it a name that's the name Stata assigns. And that's usually okay um, you know if you're not saving graphics you're just looking at them on the fly but what happens is when you start creating more graphics they use the same default name, Stata doesn't know what to do, so it simply replaces the old graph with the new one, so it destroys your old graph. By using the name, you can keep these graphs open so you can look at them side by side. So I'm going to name my graph default, so it, it gives me a sense of what's going on in this graph. I'm just doing all the default um, options. 
and then the option name itself has an option or a sub option so I do default comma replace so if I decide to run this command again and a graph with that name already exists I'm allowing Stata to write over it let's see what happens when we execute this line of code well you can see that my two graphs are identical the only difference bef between them are the names of the graphs the graph on the left is called graph the state of default the graph on the right is called default the name that I assigned to this graph we're going to use this in our next set of uh, examples so we can see the differences between graphs side by side let's move on so the first thing we can do when we start playing with these graphs if we decide we want to um, dig in a little bit deeper we don't like the defaults is we can change the width of the bins the option to do that is called the width option and you simply enter an integer number so for example I'm gonna use my two-way histogram prestige 80 comma and then I use width 1 so this is gonna make my bin width 1 now I know that that I have um, the maximum value for this prestige variable is 86 the minimum value is 17 so the range is 69 this option should produce a, uh, a histogram that has 60 approximately 69 bars of course there may be missing categories so I may not have exactly 69 and let's see what that looks like oh and I'm also naming this w1 for width 1 and there's our resulting graph not a particularly good looking graph and not very informative now before we move on and, and change the the bin width to 10 I want to point out some things here notice on the y-axis it has density not percentages we'll change that in a minute that it has um, on the x-axis it dis it uses the variable label for the title that the, the bars are kind of an orange or mustardy color and that there's a blue background around the graph all of these things can be changed that's not the point of this video I just want to get you up and running with histogram and we'll have other information in another video about how to start changing all of these kinds of aspects of your visualization to produce the graphic you'd like let me move this out of the way let's go ahead and now look at this next command and I'll highlight it in preparation to execute it also notice that Stata, um, I've lined up all my options so that ev everything looks nice and neat. And you can see that the only difference between the command above and this command is the width is changed from 1 to 10. And that the name of the graph is changed from W1 to W10. So let's go ahead and execute this graph or this command and see what we get. Now, putting these two graphs side by side, you can see the difference in them. On the left, the bin width is 1 and therefore I have roughly 69 bins on the other side I have a bin width of 10 well my range is about 70 so I should have about seven different bins each one with the width of 10 you might want to uh, change instead of the width you might want to change the number of bins so this comes down to playing around with what you know about the data does it make sense to put things into bin widths of 2 or 3 or 5 or 10 or do you just want to kind of collapse the data and say I don't really care exactly how wide my bins are but I really want about 10 columns we know that when we look at visualizations of histograms that somewhere between 6 to 15 is a pretty good number less than that we're summarizing too much more than that we're typically not summarizing enough um, that that's often a sweet spot so we could go ahead and play with the bins and that's the next set of examples now before I show you the bin command although it's very the bin option it's very simple I want to make clear to you that you can't use bin and width simultaneously for a single frequency histogram that is you either specify the width of your bins or you specify the number of bins but not both because once you fix one of those values the other one is determined by the range of your data so here I'm going to create two new graphs one will be called B15 so I'm going to specify 15 bins and the other will be called B5 and I'm going to specify 5 bins and other than that these two commands are identical so I've dropped out the width option and I've added the bin option and I'll run these two commands at one time 
and we'll look at our resulting output over here. And we're beginning to come to a, a, a pretty good set of visualizations. I kind of like the one on the left with 15. Uh, maybe I would go back and make 10. And uh, um, very quickly, I could go back and forth and play with this a little bit until I get exactly the visualization I want. Well, I mentioned that we are showing the density of your, your frequency distribution here. And for some audiences, you're going to prefer to show percentages. So this next command this next example is going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to um, use the width option so that I, my intervals are 10 wide. And again, my range is about 70, so I, so I should have approximately 7 bins. I'm going to use the percent option to convert that, um, those density numbers to percentages. And I'm going to add a title. The width and percent options only work in this particular graphic. They only work in two-way histogram. The title option will work in any state of graphic, and it's going to put a nice title at the top of the graph, in this case, Distribution of Occupational Prestige. And I'll name this particular graphic 10A. Now to make this all fit, um, you know, Stata requires that all of that a single command fits on one line, but I'd like to split this for readability. You'll notice that I've wrapped my command in a pound delimit semicolon and a pound delimit CR for carriage return and that the punctuation used for my single command is the semicolon now. So Stata knows when it sees the pound delimit semicolon that my command begins at two-way and it ends at the semicolon after the uh, replace uh, close parentheses. Also notice that for stylistic reasons I since this delimit is really I think of it as a block everything within that pound delimit semicolon has to be delimited by, each command has to be delimited by a semicolon um, that I've indented the code a little bit for readability. Let's go ahead and execute this whole block of code. It'll execute our typical two-way histogram prestige 80, assign a width of 10, show percentages, add a title, and name the graph W10A. And there we go. So now we have a nice little title. Uh, again, there's lots of other adjustments we can make, but for, for your basic histogram, this is a pretty good start. The last thing I want to show you is the buy option. If you add an option for buy, typically what you're going to do is the you, you use, um, I've, I'll highlight the uh, buy option here. And you'll see that I'm using another variable called sex. The sex variable in the general social survey is 1 equals ma males and 2 equals females. When you do a buy option, you should not do this with a continuous or quantitative variable. This is used for discrete or categorical variables. So what this will do is create a frequency distribution of occupational prestige for each group defined in the buy variable. So we're going to get uh, two graphs side by side one for men and one for women. Now notice I'm still using my width 10 and I'm still going to display percentages and I'm going to add the title which we had before and I'm going to call this graphic W10B. So if I highlight this block and uh, go over to the uh, execute button and select it you can see I've got my graphic of occupational prestige by sex. So there's something here now not right about the title. You'll notice that um, this general title I tried to add has been added to both of these graphs. So Stata, you have to dig through the manuals to find this. So this is a good tip to learn about um, because it's difficult to find um, on your own. I'm going to come down here and show you that I can, within the by statement, I can add a title. And what that will do is add that general title that we're interested in. So this particular graphic I'm going to create here, again, it'll be a distribution of occupational prestige. The width will be, uh, the bins will be 10. Display percentages. We're going to do this for males and females. And we're going to have a single title um, over the entire graphic. And we'll call this graph W10C. So highlight my block of code and click on the execute selection button and there's the uh, there's the outcome so that's a pretty good graphic and I'm very happy with that
that's our introduction to histograms. There's a few more things you can do with histograms, um, and I encourage you to go to the help file in Stata to look these up and to learn a little more about the command. We're going to have other videos that look at some of the kinds of options that are available for visualizations and graphics that work in every graphic, things like title, and show you how to make this graphic suit your particular um, stylistic uh, concerns, color and, uh, and so forth. We, and virtually everything in the graph is customizable. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, please send me an email or give me a call, and I will do my best to answer them. Let it's code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then draw, score, lean, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old oh, boys, can't you code it? Program it right. Nothing ever happens.